So on my last video, someone made a comment about uh, a little trick that they do with their auto trickler setup um, to kind of trick it into being a little bit more accurate. And what they told me is, is that if you adjust your uh, drop weight to be like one one hundredth of a grain off from your actual target, since the scale can only read in like 0 0.02 grain resolution, it will end up picking between the value below or the value above, and you actually get less variation in the drops that way. Uh, because apparently if you uh, have it set to an increment of 0 0.02 grains, uh, it will hit that target, but it will also accept, you know, one read below or one read above uh, because that's its accuracy resolution. So I'm going to give that a shot and see if it actually makes any difference. And so in order to test this, um, I'm going to be using Varget. And Varget is a very difficult powder, um, at least if you if you read the internet. A lot of people regard Varget as a difficult powder to measure, and that's because it's a uh, kind of a long, skinny, extruded powder. It's, it's little sticks. And so this is what I'm talking about. Now, I've got four grains of powder here. Uh, these two are Varget, and this is 4350, Hagen 4350. And so you can kind of see, and I know it's kind of difficult. Uh, let me try to get them next to each other. Uh, the Varget is a little bit longer and a little bit skinnier than the 4350. And 4350 I use quite a bit. Um, and so I'm pretty used to how it drops, and I, it, it does pretty well through the auto trickler. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people say that Varget is very difficult. And so, you know, this is what it looks like. And we're going to give that a shot and see how it handles this kind of thin, long extruded powder and see if that gives us any trouble. Because if we're going to be able to squeeze accuracy or, you know, uh, shrink the variation of our drops, uh, this powder should be difficult and it should show hopefully the biggest improvement. So the way I'm going to do the test is I'm just going to do 20 drops. Um, one, I'm going to be dropping at 23.00 grains, and the other I'm going to drop at 23.01 grains. Um, that's kind of a common charge weight for 223 with Varget, and we'll see if we get any, uh, any issues or any difference between those. Now, um, whenever I do my drops, um, I'm going to be timing them too, just to make sure that there's nothing off with the speed of the drops. Now, it's going to be difficult to see in this video. Let me move the camera and see. I can get this to show up because I'll show you how I count the time on a drop on the auto trickler. Um, I've got this protective screen and it's kind of reflective. There we go. So you'll see this little uh, tear indicator. And so if I pull this off, um, whenever I put this back on, it takes a second and then the tear indicator comes up. That's what I use to start the drop times. And then with the auto trickler, um, whenever it finishes with the, the V4 here, it shines a blue light down. And so that's when I measure that the drop has finished. And so that's how I time drops, because to me, the tear indicator says that the system thinks everything is good and ready to go. It does actually take a bit before it starts dropping powder, but that way I can get a consistent time measurement. That's how I do it um, on this scale. So for this test, it I don't really, you know, care as much about the timing as the drop weights. Um, so I'm just going to do it manually. Uh, in the past, I've even, like, I've pulled the video and I could actually get to the frame of the video, which is 1 30th of a second the way I filmed this thing, um, for accuracy. But I don't need the timing to be that accurate. I'm mostly just making sure that there's no gross differences um, in drop time. So... Again, I'm just going by the light, but I'm probably just going to track it with uh, with a phone um, where I just use a little stopwatch timer on the phone and just do it manually, and that'll be good enough for this test. Okay, so I've got everything calibrated and ready to go for this test. Uh, just because somebody might want to know, here are the settings that I'm going to be using. Um, I'll give you a demo to see how fast this goes, so you can kind of see, again, the way I do the timing, um, for me anyway. All right, so I'm going to pull this off, dump it into the hopper, and then as soon as I set this and I see the uh, the tear indicator, I'm going to start the timer. And there's the light. And so that was uh, a little under eight seconds, which is a pretty good drop. So that's what these settings are currently doing. 
And again, that's from tear weight to the system saying we are done. Now, as I wave my hands around, the scale's moving a little bit just from the wind because it's that sensitive. So um, anyway, that's how I'm going to do the timing and everything. So this is going to be 20 drops set at 23 flat. All right, so that was the last one. That was 7.63 and 22.98. So there's our data. And uh, we ended up with an average drop time of 10.22 seconds. And the average drop was 22.997. So very, very accurate um, on that. Like I said, the, uh, the drops were about 10.2 seconds. Uh, give or take because I'm timing that by hand, but you know, 10 second drops aren't bad. Um, so for the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be uh, 23.01. And that's supposed to help, right? Because this thing reads in, you know, two hundredths of a grain. So it's a milligram scale. It will read down to 0.02 grains. And so again, the test is, does putting the target in between uh, the scales readings uh, help achieve better accuracy, um, and so I'm gonna make that the target. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just run a, a test drop um, just to see how it goes here. All right, so there we go. That was about 13.3. And one thing uh, I'll point out is some of my drops that I've shown you have been really, really fast. Um, this is why Varget is kind of a pain, because what happens in this trickle, this one took a lot longer, but like a huge portion of the time is it trickling there at the very end. And because those grains are kind of long, um, what happens is, is like nothing will happen and they'll kind of get caught up here at the trickle tube and then it will turn and drop like two or three of them, which could put you over if you just needed, you know, two, two one hundredths of a grain, each kernel's probably 0 0.03 or 0 0.02. And so if you drop just two kernels, all of a sudden you've got to over, uh, over drop. So, so anyway, you know, VAR gets a little tougher to deal with, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and run 20 of these with the, uh, the 23.01 setting and see if we spot any difference in overall time or accuracy of drops. All right, so this is going to be the last drop of these 20. Okay, so that's 8.19. Another little over. So this is one problem that I've seen um, with setting uh, the way I did. I picked the high side of my target. I picked 23.01 instead of 22.99. Um, and so I did find that it, it does seem that I was much more likely to get overthrows. I ended up getting five overthrows out of 20, something like that, five or six compared to just two um, when I just had it set to 23 flat. But I mean, what, what's going to happen is it's, you know, going to try to get to that 23.01 and it can't read that number. So if it gets to 23.00 and then it puts another grain, um, you have just a much higher probability of getting too much at that point. Um, and, and that shouldn't happen, right? I think the tolerance should have it, um, you know, if it hits 23, even it should stop. But basically on average, you're going to go higher because it's trying to hit a number that it can't hit, is what I think. Now, again, I could be wrong. Um, let me work up the numbers really quick and see what the overall totals are. Okay, so uh, setting to 23 flat, averaged at 10.2 seconds uh, with 
setting it to 23.01, average 10.08 seconds. Um, the average drop weights, uh, if you went with 23 flat, was 22.997. If you went with 23.01, I got 23.008. So I did get approximately, uh, well, 0.01. I got like 0.011. That was the difference in the means. So it literally, whenever I set it to drop one one hundredth of a grain more, on average, it gave me one one hundredth of a grain more. So that's crazy. Um, but the standard deviations uh, are really, really close. So the standard deviations of the drop weights, um, if you, if, when I set it 23 flat with 0 0.0134 um, and set to 23.01 was 0 0.0134. Six. So, uh, to me, statistically, there's nothing there. The, it's basically the same. Um, whenever you tell it to go to 23.01, on average, it will give you another one hundredth of a grain. Um, that's what you're going to get. Now, what I found was uh, it does look like I got more heavy drops, but I really don't have enough data to test the statistics of whether you're going to get more heavy drops. But I'm probably not going to worry about this. I'm going to set my target weight. It's going to be in two one hundredths of a grain increments, and I'm just going to go about my business because I don't see enough in this uh, to warrant really pursuing it much more. But it was an interesting thought and uh, definitely worth checking because, you know, it, it had some intrinsic kind of logic to it. Um, picking that in between may, may help you weed out uh, bad attempts by the machine, but in testing, I'm just not seeing that it's working. So it could be the Varget. You know, it's a tough it's a tough powder to drop, so maybe that's the issue. Um, maybe if I picked a ball powder, maybe if I'd use like CFE 223 or something or a Ramshot tack, maybe that would work a little bit better because then, you know, you don't have the extruded powder nonsense. But, eh, I don't know. That's it for me. Um, if you got any feedback or questions or comments or anything, again, as always, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.